Bird Brain, and today we are talking about compositing. So Harmony 21 came out with lots of cool features, and one of them is the Shine node. So the Shine node allows you to, guess what, make stuff shine. Wow! So it's really interesting because unlike other kind of glow effect, um, instead of just making your shape radiately shine or something, this is like an expanding effect of light rays or something. And the light ray is great because it gives you a little dot, and if I move that dot, I can move how the light rays move in my scene. And of course, this dot is animatable. You can animate it in your timeline directly, or you can just give a peg to your node. All right, so if I go here and I give a peg to my node, I will be able to move the pivot point using a peg. So like if Z was moving the crown in the scene, I could also just attach it to my shine like this. But you know, this is this is more like animation thing. Uh, just know that you can peg that effect. The cool thing with the shine effect is that you can use it on one layer, but you can also use it on your whole scene. So I'm going to show you this by removing my shine and just putting it here where my display is. And you can make like your whole scene shine. It just takes a little while to render. So that's really cool if you want to do like a flashback effect or something. So today I'm going to use it on my crown just because it's faster to render. By the way, if your computer has trouble rendering, always know that you can click on this little button to lower your quality because you might not always need to have perfect quality when you render. I'm gonna keep mine high for the video recording, but you know, if you're working, you should lower it. It's gonna save you time. Okay, so let's remove that shine effect and start fresh. To bring in the shine, just go in your node view, press enter and find the shine, and connect it to your layer. However, if you connect it just directly to the layer, you're gonna make that whole thing shine, eh, which is not always what we want. Uh, usually we wanna put it either over to have a cool effect like this. <laughs> it's kind of like a bad signal. Or you can put it behind as well for another kind of effect up to you. I'm gonna put mine over because it allows us to see a bit more <laughs> what the effect does and um, now let's learn how to make it work. I'm gonna press on the little square. If you're a more seasoned compositing artist you might prefer to use the view called layer properties which instead of having to click on the boxes to have everything appear you can just have it docked in. For the recording I do prefer to use the boxes but yeah just so you know there is a layer property view that is very useful. So I'm gonna go get the properties of my shine node and I'm gonna walk you through them. The center is where you want your ray to originate from. You can change that by clicking on your shine node, going to show control and moving the red dot. Note that you must use the transform tool to move it. So if you don't want it to be animated don't forget to use the animate off button and then just move your point somewhere and you see this is gonna move the coordinate. You can also enter your own coordinate, but you know, why bother <laughs> if you can just move this point. You can also use a peg to move the point, and uh, this is where you would animate it. Um, the ray length is just how long you want your rays to be. If I put it to 5, I'm gonna have tiny baby rays, and if I put it to 100, they're gonna be really big. The fall off is how kind of constant you want them to shine, like how you want them to kind of drop off. So by default, the fall off is 1, but you can change it to maybe like 2. And you can see that your rays are still long, it's just that they're they're gonna fall off <laughs> earlier. And of course, if you put zero, they're just kind of never gonna fall off and you're gonna see that little thing here, which is not pretty. So always have at least one or more uh, of fall off. You know, usually we keep it between one or two because if you start to go bigger than two, it's falling off very quickly, which makes it become a bit useless. So yeah, that's the fall off. So the alpha gamma is kind of how intense your shine is. So if I put five, it's gonna be really intense. And if I put zero, uh, you don't get anything. <laughs> and then the alpha black output point and the alpha white output point, it's kind of how you want your shine to be either like very transparent or very solid. So if you play with these numbers, you might have something like this, which is not great. Um, but you know, by playing with these numbers, you can customize your effect a bit more. Um, yeah, so just play with those. Usually the alpha black is kind of how solid you want your shine to be and the alpha white is kind of how feathered or soft you want it to look as well. And then use source color. This is pretty self-explanatory. Do you want to use the original colors or just a new one that you would have here? Nothing much to say. The color gain is kind of how intense you want that color to saturate your shine. So if I put one, you're going to see that it's going to be a white tinted with yellow. If I put like zero, you're not seeing anything. <laughs> and if I put 1.5, it's getting more white. So one, 0.5 is more white and if I put just one it's gonna be a bit more yellow so you can play with the color again like that if you want to I'm gonna set mine to one because I like it like that and then the blend mode is just a blend mode that is applied if you don't want it here you can leave it to normal so it's just gonna give you like a color information and then you can use your blend mode from the outside and just connect it here instead if you want to integrate this to another kind of thing in your, you know, because you can use the shine as a cutter or something. So 
there's a lot of things you can do with a shine but we're gonna keep it simple <laughs> like this and i'm gonna set it back to add and that's how i have my effect now if you want to animate it super easy you just use this function curve here so you can animate the ray length in time you can animate um, anything you want in time just use your basic editor to animate these things in time by putting keyframes and then moving it and putting another keyframe but this is a bit more advanced if you don't know what the basic editor is we have documentations check it out today i don't have time for that and i'm gonna wish you a happy week and see you next time bye bye